My name is Nathaniel, and this is the Motorcycle Archives. So what are we looking at over here? Like these are some of the bikes that you've built. Can you talk yeah, about so, it? Yeah, so these are kind of, you know, th this was built for Born Free 13, Born Free 15. This is just kind of my shop truck, daily rider. And then this is Katie's Sportster. Um, so yeah, but these two pan heads are, are pretty highly customized. This one, I blew the motor up recently, so it's kind of like halfway taken apart. But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, this one's technically registered as a 65 pan head, but it's kind of a Frankenstein motor. Um, this one's a 57-ish, um, same thing. It's kind of got... Um, it's sort of a hodgepodge of stuff. Um, this is an 84 shovel head. Um, this thing kind of gets overlooked a lot because it's just sort of pretty mild looking, but there it's pretty highly customized. The, um, you know, everything's kind of been tweaked dimensionally and stuff on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. can, we, um, can we talk about the the first bike too like the you did the whole front end from scratch you said yeah yeah so this that? is um this front end um you know it's got custom trees that i machined um super narrow and i wanted it to look like just you know kind of one nice line so this tree is welded into the fork tube um it's got internal fork stops built into it. The handlebars are welded into this tree, so there's no hardware. Um, and, you know, I, I did these sort of curve blending on here just so that they look really smooth. Um, added this little fork brace to keep the tubes from tweaking. You know, this kind of makes it a little bit stiffer and ride a little better. Um, and then it's got, so this side, it's got an internal brake. So this, you twist this back and it'll activate this little mini tiny drum. What is that drum off of? It's a, a CCE made it, I think. Um, and then I added like this little scoop and, and vent on it. It's just a little chopper drum from like this seventies. Um, and then internal throttle on here. Um, and then these grips, um, I designed these and 3D printed them um, and then polished them so they look, uh, you know, like they're not 3D printed. Fun fact, these grips are the first version that ended up turning into these. You know, so you could, these are kind of like a longer version. Um, you know, these are soft rubber, um, you know, so I kind of use this stuff, you know, as I'd mentioned before, um, you know, those grips inspired this production part. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I kind of go through some of this stuff and, and use it as a test bed, you know, like I had talked about before for production parts, you know? Right. And then this this is the bike that you built for the book, right? Yeah, or like you yep. kind of like are talking about in the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, th yeah. So this the book goes through how to build this bike, um, and this was on display for at Born Free, and then it ended up getting um, uh, invited to go to Japan for the Moon Eyes show. So this bike will be um, getting shipped to Japan uh, in a few weeks and then it'll be on display in December in Yokohama. Nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love the front end, dude. What, what's the, what front end is this? Uh, so this is like, a, um, this is actually a, a reproduction XA Springer. So this is like two inches longer than a um, stock Harley Springer. Um, and then I stripped it all down and I added like these angled chevrons and normally they would only have one of these just just this i added this second one and gave it these kind of 
cuts to just stylize it a little bit more. Um, it's got one of my headlight brackets and right, uh, top clamp and risers. Those are parts that I sell on the site. Um, but, you know, like to me, I feel like, you know, cutting up and messing around with a reproduction springer and getting it re-chromed, like did the trick for me, you know? It's like, I could put my own spin on it. I didn't break the bank and I know it's like good new metal, you know? Um, but that's just kind of my opinion on it. And then I love the Sportster too, the Sportster's tight. Can you talk a little bit about this one right here? Yeah, Ooh, so... You said it's the 80? <laughs> yeah, so this is a 1980 Sportster. Um, and the kind of the long story on it is Katie wanted to get a bike. Um, you know, she... Initially, she didn't really like uh, the idea of ha having her own motorcycle. She kind of liked just riding on the back. And then the more she's been around, the more bike shows, she started to kind of get the bug. And so a couple of years ago, she hit me up and was just like, hey, like, I think I want to build a bike. Like, can we, you know, do something? And so I had a bunch of Triumph parts. We started building our Triumph and just kind of realized like, ah, oh, this isn't going to like, you know, it's just a little bit too much bike for a, a beginner. Um, but she didn't want to have an Evo Sportster because I feel like, you know, she's just like, ah, oh, every girl out there has got an Evo Sporty. So um, I felt like this would be a good platform. It's got an electric start, but it still kind of looks cool. This is a later iron head. So it's got like the upgraded oil pump. It's got um, a little better charging setup. Um, and you know, it's, it's worked out to be a pretty good bike for her. It's, it's, um, you know, pretty nice to ride. Um, but it's got the electric start and everything. Um, we did put these are like the earlier, like the sixties style rocker boxes. We put these on normally the eighties ones have a notched, uh, rocker box. Um, was that just a direct fit too? Or? Yeah. Yeah. They pretty just much? bolt on. Um, <laughs> and then I had an 82 I freaking loved it oh yeah yeah, yeah. see that's like 79 that to 85 is like the a good years um we made this like lee style brake pedal for it um you know to try to keep it you know mechanical rear brake um did I have a mechanical rear brake in 80 or no it was no it, it would have been a disc, disc at that point um and then she bought the tin set from Gary Royal. He did the paint job on it. Um, and then uh, she got this butt seat for it uh, from uh, at Born Free this year. So that's the newest edition. But. And was it, um, is this the original frame that you cut or this is in like hardtailed or was it? No, uh, so I think this is, <clears throat> this is just like a old frame that I had. I think this is actually a K model frame <laughs> that we cut up. Um, and then uh, this is a V twin hardtail. Like they're super cheap. You can buy them for like $180 or something like that. It it was like really kind of wide. Like it came out here straight and then like pinched in really hard. So Katie and I cut the tubes off. Uh, Jeff Layton let us use his frame jig. Um, we cut the tubes and flipped them around and rebent them to kind of like narrow all this up. Um, and then uh, Brooke Lund gave us this oil tank that then uh we cut and narrowed to to get it to fit the narrower frame i love the shape of it that's really cool yeah and then the frame um my friend matt at steel coatings did the powder coat on the frame it's kind of here i'll like get my it's light like, on it like purple, right? yeah it's like kind of like a merlot oh, sort yeah. of like wine red oh, candy cool. yeah when it's out in the sun it looks really cool yeah, it's really nice. um 
but even in the front like i mean i feel like it kind of bends a little bit right here uh, is that how it just normally was or? uh yeah that's normal oh, yeah that's cool. and it and like from the factory the the early sportster and k model frames had like this doubler it looks kind of cool um but come on technology man yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh we also uh converted it to a hydraulic clutch to oh, make nice. it easier for her to pull um because that was th that is the bad thing with these is that the clutch is super hard to pull on it and so um i made this little uh, slave cylinder conversion setup um and actually ended up having to take out there's a second spring in the clutch that we had to remove um but it now it's like really it it works pretty well and the clutch seems to grab fine i was worried when i took the second spring out but it'll do a wheelie it it hooks up pretty good so Matt. and then what do we have over here that looks like this is uh, under construction over here and then we got this uh, Kawasaki right here. Yeah, cool. yeah, so I've got a uh, 68 Datsun 510 car project that I'm slowly working on. Um, yeah, converting it to uh, dual Webers. Um, that's like a just back burner, you know, just when I get some free time to work on the car project. Um, how do you manage all that stuff going on at the same time? Do you just like... <laughs> Not very like, well. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of, I don't know, ADD, just bounce around, you know, like <laughs> sort of like a ping pong ball or something. Um, but, and then, yeah, this is Katie's KZ400. Um, I like the seat. Yeah, th this is actually the cat. The cats like will nice. want to scratch the seats oh, sometimes. Yeah. So, but she actually might put that. <laughs> Everybody's been complimenting the seats, so she might like strap it down. And then like we did the paint job on it a little while ago. Just we had some extra paint, and like late one night, we're just like, should we just paint this thing? So <laughs> I don't know. We've got kind of been having fun like doing some. I don't know, less serious, you know, doesn't have to be full show quality. Yeah, just, just having fun with it. Yeah. we. I think we started the paint job at like midnight and finished it at like two, just <laughs> <laughs> painting it on the side of the house, you know. Um, Before we get too far this way, I noticed all these, these machines that you have here. Is this like a, th or what is, what's going on over here with this, this machine right here? Is so it where this, you manufacture your 3D parts? Yeah. So this is like a milling machine, a CNC mill. Um, this isn't like a, this is like sort of a hobby grade CNC mill. Um, and so, yeah, you can design a part on the computer and put it into here and then you can, you know, this thing will cut it out. It, <laughs> it's not as easy as it sounds. It definitely like can kick my ass sometimes, but I'll break tools a lot on it. Cause I'm not a very good machinist, but, um, you could do some light production on this thing, but um, uh, it's, I'm just not that great at, at uh, you know, like production run stuff. So I, I've got a machine shop that I work with that, do, you know, I'll kind of build the prototypes on this and then usually sub out to a bigger machine house to do the parts on on that aspect but well when you're talking about like the 3d stuff that you printed for your bike mm -hmm. are you using like are, you, are those like plastic pieces that yeah you, okay, yeah gotcha. uh-huh so yeah i can show you if you want to yeah, come in here kind of, like, dope. <clears throat> um here let me grab these really quick and then we can go in there so um So yeah, I've got this little just, this is just like a little 3D printer. It's not like, this isn't anything super fancy, but um, so I'll design parts on the, on the computer. I use a program called Fusion 360 
and I'll print off like just little test pieces. You know, these are some new trees that I'm going to be coming out with. These are for a 33 millimeter and 35 millimeter front ends. But before I, you know, run a prototype on the mill, I'll just print these out and I can test fit them and see if they work, you know, um, just to make sure that it's going to be close at least. Um, but this machine, I also, you know, can put different filaments in to do different stuff. Like for instance, the handle grips on the other bike I did with this black, with this black filament. Um, and this machine basically, this is kind of just like a hot glue gun and it just like extrudes a little line, you know, and it, and it'll just build layer after layer to build this thing up. Um, and then like, if we go back and look at the, mm -hmm. oh, you get stuck in here. <laughs> <laughs> so like on this bike, you know, this had all those little thin layer lines, but I just put it in the lathe and like polished it super smooth to get rid of those. Um, and if you look like this shift knob down here, this skull shift knob. So like I, I printed that off and then clear coated it and that got rid of all the, the uh, lines in it. And then I put like these little zirconia diamond uh, guys in the eyes. That's pretty sweet. How'd you put the, did you glue, glue those in kind of? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. But then like, um, if you come over here, like this bike, so this lens and that tail light lens, um, I printed those. I designed those lenses here. You can yeah. tuck back yeah, in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. These all have these little drip trays. And so these lenses are, that one is like a production one. And then these two are the printed. Um, so those are actually printed on a different printer. These are like a resin based printer. That's how you can get kind of the clear lens material out of it. Mm -hmm. And I can show you that when we come over on this other side. This is just my little kind of shop truck. Um, this is a Yamaha SR500. The workhorse. Yeah, I, I uh, ride this just to the, where I do my shipping. And you know, if I don't have a ton of orders, I'll just throw them in here. And it's super fun to ride. I've been riding this one a ton lately. It's like. Yeah, I love just, the, seat, the seats that you have on it. Yeah. The seat that you have on it, it's dope. Yeah, this seat is from a friend of mine um, in Thailand, uh, Yeah Seat Company. He made this for me, um, and I thought that was fitting to put on there. And that's how the frame was too, just a single down tube as well? Or? Yeah, yeah. That looks sweet. And then I just kind of made like this rear, this little rear grab bar. Um, this, I actually had this bike set up as a road race bike. Like I had full body work, uh, like a big front fairing and, um, you know, racing tail section and stuff on it. But, um, and I had been taking it to the track to do some road racing. Um, but I knew this year I wasn't really going to be able to, to do any of the track days. They just kind of scheduling was bad. So I was like, screw it i'll just kind of make it into a little jammer you know? <laughs> yeah man and this like cool. <clears throat> this thing like uh here let me slide it over a little um i used like some sportster quick release bag mount or i think either sissy bar or bag mounts so i made this thing so it just like oh, yeah, pops yeah. on and off and you That's know a, and you got your light on the back too yeah right. this one is it, this is uh um a lucas one so okay. that's like not so one that cool. i made but similar style Damn, this thing is crazy dude oh yeah i, I 3, <laughs> 3d printed this oh, stack really? for it yeah oh yeah that's pretty sweet how much heat can that something like that withstand 
Uh, the plastic that you, yeah. It's not very, it, you can get high heat filament, like you can get carbon fiber reinforced filament that like people are making like intake manifolds and stuff for cars out of. Um, super light too, huh? Yeah, super yeah. light and like crazy strong. Um, but honestly, the intake like on one of these bikes doesn't really see much. Uh, it doesn't really get that hot, you know? Um, and then what the, what's the headlight from? It's just like one that I sell, just like a little chopper, chopper headlight. Sweet. Um, and then frame jig right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a frame jig I made it here. I'll push this out of the way. You can kind of get in there a little bit. So yeah, this is a uh, frame jig that I've been working on. I kind of just finished it. The the born the most recent born free bike was kind of the first frame that I ran through here. I want to stand a little closer to it. Yeah. But but yeah, I wanted to do like a double shear. Like this headstock unit is like really stout. Like uh, most people don't really have like this double plated neck setup um all this is like really heavy duty stuff you know one inch plate that way if i need to do any straightening i can use like hydraulic rams off of this stuff and and really yank it around um and then the legs these are from a uh, local foundry uh was working on making a bell like a liberty bell style cradle for this a local school and i was over there and was just like hey could you cast another set of those legs and so they they made me and my buddy jeff a set of the extra set of legs um but so yeah that's kind of that nice is there anything that you want to like challenge yourself with something like this i mean i, I just maybe in general like is there something that you want to challenge yourself next with a, a build or um, like that. I mean, I've been thinking about making some big twin frames, um, like a production frame. And that was kind of why I went pretty hardcore on this frame jig, just so that if I do decide to go down that route, like everything will be dead set and I, and I, um, don't have to worry about anything tweaking or, or, you know, warping on like a, if I start doing production frames through this, um, but we'll see if I get there, you know, it, that's like a, a big kind of bite to chew off. I've done a, a bunch of custom frames over the years, but they've always just kind of been one-off frames. And so, um, you know, we'll see if I want to do, end up wanting to do like a production run or not. Um, and then actually we could go in here. We didn't really show that at all. <coughs> um, so yeah, this is just like the grind, this is like the grinder room, just kind of keep the dirt in here. Um, and so this is a CNC plasma cutter. So kind of like the other machine, you can put in a program and put a piece of metal on this table and this torch will come through and cut it out. Um, and uh, you know, I make a lot of brackets and stuff like that we've got sandblaster grinder bench do a lot of work here <laughs> you know just this is like where a lot of uh dust and sound and sparks is made you know yeah and you, it's a good thing you got this to protect the rest of the stuff out yeah there. that just kind of keeps the dirt contained in here you know or grinder dust i should say yeah. and then air compressor in the closet and you know belt sanders and whatnot <clears throat> cool and then that last room back there you got a pretty cool flathead what year is that flathead back there uh the flathead's a 1943 which is kind of a an odd year middle middle of world war ii um so this bike was uh 
some of you guys may have seen this motor and transmission was in um, my Born Free 9 bike. Um, and, you know, I loved that bike. Uh, the, the frame from that is actually the one that's on the frame jig. Um, but, you know, like I had mentioned before about the resale value and everything, um, you know, I kind of looked at that motorcycle and was like, man, I want to build something new. I know that the motor is good. I know the transmission wheels is good and everything. So I just sort of took that bike apart and just spread it around into, you know, like the newborn free bike and everything. And, um, so this is just, I'm just kind of cobbling this together as like a old looks, um, just kind of dirtier chopper. I actually painted the tank and fender like two weeks ago and then just aged it to look, you know, kind of crusty. Um, these are some pipes that I, uh, I'm going to start selling not, they won't have the mufflers, but, uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'll have some production knucklehead and flathead up sweeps. Um, you know, so it'll just be kind of this head pipe back and, and this lower pipe. And is it like going to be basically the same thing for both bikes or do you have to like make a little bit of adjustments? Cause the, uh, yeah, the knucklehead, the, the port comes out differently. So those will have a different, this bend will be different on those two, yes. you know? And when you do something like that, when you're making those parts, do you make like a set amount that you plan on selling or is it kind of? Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, to be honest, I usually do the smallest amount that I can, you know, like the CNC tube bending shop that that's bending the pipes for me, they have minimums. And so I have to stick to those in, in order to, you know, be allowed to place an order with them. But I always usually try to go on the small end so that I can see how they sell or, or you know, whatever like that, but, um, and then <clears throat> this is a cone shovel head. I'm trying to have this thing done actually in like two weeks. Um, yeah, That's cool. yeah I've got to build the motor still and, and paint the thing, but, um, th that Ryan is actually like putting on a, um, Ryan Cox and Ryan Grossman are putting on a ride through Death Valley that I'm going to try to have this thing done for. Um, Is it the DVR? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Nice. Um, the, nothing too special on this bike. Um, you know, sometimes I end up collecting a bunch of parts uh, just over the years, and I like to just put some of that together just you know, without it being like such high pressure, like the born free bikes, like all like agonize over that. And this one is kind of fun. Cause it's just like, you know, I've got, got some wheels, you know, got, I made an oil tank that kind of fit. This frame is cheap. It's not like anything super nice, but sometimes I feel like it's like refreshing to just get it out of my system and not have to be like tripping out on every last detail, you know? <clears throat> so this one's going to be kind of weird. It's got an electric start. I kind of have been digging riding Katie's Sportster with this starter. So <laughs> yeah, it'll have this starter on it. Um, Just as an option, you don't always have to kick it. Yeah, yeah, it'll <laughs> still have the kicker, but I want it like really reliable. So it's like, it'll have the electric start, but if the electric start doesn't work, like if the battery's low or something, then I can kickstart it and I'm running a magneto. So like this doesn't rely on the battery at all. Mm -hmm. So like this thing should be pretty bomb proof for the most part, you know, and I'm running like mechanical brakes on it. So I don't have to do any, I don't have to bleed any brakes. Like I just want this thing to be just easy. You know, it's got, uh, it's going to have an alternator motor. So um, some of the older motors have generators and those are prone to going out and not super reliable, but the alternator makes a ton of power and, and that'll charge the battery up really good. So I'm kind of just going like whatever the most like durable setup is, you know, that's what's up. Sometimes like it's my impression that that's not always the most common thing is, is a reliable, durable yeah. Set up when it comes to the old bikes, but yeah. And a lot of people get really hung up on power. Like how fast is it? You know? And, and 
as I get older, I just have kind of figured out, I just don't really care. You know, like if I want to go fast, I'll get a R1 or a Hayabusa or something like Harleys just aren't really that fast. <laughs> and that's not why we like them, you know, like, um, I think a 74 cubic inch motor is plenty for me and they start nice. Yeah. They, uh, they're definitely fast enough for anything I'm doing. And, um, I'm, I'm just kind of like into that lately, you know? Yeah. No, I appreciate that. Cause like, there's always a search for more power, but there's always something that's going to be more powerful, you know? <laughs> like... Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and do you use the power? I, d I really don't, you know, like going 90 on the freeway is fine for me. Like I don't really need to go much faster than that. And these things are still plenty fast to enjoy, you know, they're torquey and, and, um, I don't know, once again, like, I feel like modifying one of these things is like hopping up a, I don't know, like a Chevy Impala or something, you know, it's like, it's never going to be that fast, yeah. you know, like they're classics, like, they're heavy. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. They're, they're kind of clunky. They don't stop very well. They're not that fast, but they're cool. You know, yeah, like, of course, like at the end of the day, you know, unfortunately the, the, uh, these things will get smoked, you know, like it's not even in the same universe as a Japanese sport bike, you know? And so cool. And then, and then what's over here? You got your literature over here and some <laughs> yeah. collectibles. Yeah. Just some random kind of books. And, you know, this, this is sort of like my favorites, I guess. Can you I see the, the bike riders one? Can you, can you show the camera? Uh, is it yeah. in there somewhere? Yep. Right here. I've actually never actually seen the bike, the mo or the book. Yeah. So this is like That's the second cool. edition. Um, I can't remember what, you know, I got the book. My dad gave me this book um, when I started Pangea, kind of as like a good luck. <laughs> here, here you go, you know. Um, yeah, this one's from 2003. Um, you know, I got it in 2008, I guess it was. Um, but you're kind of talking about the story of like, I don't know if you'd feel comfortable sharing the story of, uh, the book being held hostage, but <laughs> you don't have to, if you don't want yeah, to, yeah, it's kind of on. a long story, but, um, <laughs> no, forget it. But yeah. Um, what's up, what's up with this clown image right here? Oh it's yeah. Interesting. Uh, I got this at the long beach swap meet. Um, looks like it needs to be straightened a little. Um, I don't know. I've just always thought that the clown paintings are cool. They're kind of creepy, you know? Um, <laughs> I got this at the swap. I, uh, actually, no, I got this. I got this from a guy that's normally at the swap, but I actually got it at, um, there used to be, it was called like inspiration. I think it was like a clothing swap meet. Um, and yeah, in LA. And yeah, I got it from that guy there, but yeah, I don't know. I just thought it always looked cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not like, some of my friends are like really organized with all this stuff, but I just, I don't know, I'm kind of onto the next thing usually. Like, <laughs> not that I don't like appreciate or respect this stuff, but it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. I think I'm on like a never ending hunt for like, the next thing so like then you got a little sportster over there i see yeah yeah that's a 85 sportster motor with a turbo on it oh nice and then what are you gonna do with that i think i'm gonna build a bike kind of oh. like katie's Is like, a race bike or something or? no no I, just a chopper uh that was the turbo that was on i built a bosozoku bike with uh uh for born free four and it had that turbo on it um and I just kind of hung it on there, but now I think I actually might try to run it. Yeah, it looks pretty damn cool. Um, I just love sportsters. I just love the idea of like it, them being kind of like an underdog and yeah, being nimble and I don't know, they're dope. Yeah, and all the fastest Harleys were were sportster based. You know, like all the racing uh, bikes were all four cam sporties. You know, um, uh, this thing's kind of cool. Like 
<laughs> this is like a little tiny rotary engine. I used to be like really into RX-7s and, and rotaries. And so this thing is like, a, um, like the world's smallest rotary. <laughs> what the hell? That's crazy, dude. What is that for? For like a remote control airplane. Nice. But yeah, yeah, it runs like it's got the little carburetor on it and glow plug. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of this stuff's random. Like, there used to be this uh, like a homeless dude over by my uh, other little shipping area, and he would always do paintings. And so I bought like this <laughs> painting from him the one day. I don't know. He's cool. Like, is that your pops right there? No. The yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nice, dude. That's dope. Yeah, and that's my grandma. Awesome. I'm trying to think of what else that's cool on here. Yeah, it's kind of like these are like just sort of my favorite stuff. It's like random, and then this is like bike magazines. This is like motorcycle uh, books, you know, like about how to work on them or or whatever, like more like manual type stuff and then this is just like really random just like a lot of books about race cars um you know machining typography just i don't know kind of like all sorts of random stuff <laughs> you talked about maybe selling one of those bikes that you have in the front if, uh -huh. you, if you were to sell one which one would it be I don't know. That's like the hard part. Like <laughs> I, I used to really never be, um, sentimental about any of them. Like, you know, I've always that, like, that's how I kind of climbed the ladder on it is you got to sell, you know, like, um, so I don't know. I'm not sure which one I'd cut loose, but probably the, the born free 15 pan head, the, the newest one. Um, I really love it, but the other pan head, like, I just put so much heart and soul into that one. I don't know if I could cut that one loose, you know? The um, one with the prism tank? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh -huh. one's awesome, dude. The uh, the other one, it, I don't know. Like, I really like that bike too, but I think I could let that one go, you know? <laughs> yeah, if anybody's interested, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, cool. Thanks again, man. Thanks for showing me. Yeah. The garage. Appreciate it. Yeah, no sweat. Sweet. I'm going to cut that. <laughs>